Shady McCoy, Super Bowl, a couple of them, Chiefs and Bucks, 12 years, six-time Pro Bowler. We were just talking about this, about I have my herd hierarchy tomorrow, and I know the top four or five teams. You start getting into that 10-12 range, Jets, Patriots, um, you know, it's tough. Like, I don't know what to do with the Seahawks or the Jets. I do feel like the Giants, they are what they are. They do what they do well. Right. So I want to open with Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts and the uh, Eagles play tonight against Washington. That's right. How, you played with Josh Allen as a kid, a rookie. So you played with young guys in your career. Yeah. How surprised are you the leap Jalen Hurts has made from last year to now? Well, I think it all starts with the coaching, right? I think it starts with the coaching. I think Nick has done a great job with him and also – how Howie Roseman, the GM, putting team teammates and players around him to build that like chemistry and that culture. And it's like when I see Jalen Hurts, he looks like a different player. He looks more confident. Um, the guys believe in him more. He's always had that leadership and even like his running ability. Like he can run, but he's not running a lot like he did last year. Right. He's throwing the ball. Um, I think a lot has to do with like the, the players. You bring A.J. Brown in here and it's like coming from Tannehill where everything's not perfect a big body receiver, catches the ball, break tackles. And it makes it a lot easier for, for, the, for the player. And I love that because most teams and GMs, they'll draft a player and just put him in the scheme instead of making the scheme fit him. So now we draft this player, right, that didn't ask to be here. We right. picked him. Let's put players around him to make him better, that fit his skill set. Like one thing like Andy Reid, I remember when I got to the Chiefs and we were just talking about like, like um, you know, coming from Josh Allen, he's a young guy, he's asking about him. And I'm asking about Pat because Pat arrived to be a superstar. He said one thing he did was he went back to his old tapes in Texas Tech and seen all the stuff he did well. So he added that, the mixture of that, with, with the stuff he did with the West Coast offense and put it together. I love that because you're going to get things that he did well and, and, and implement it into your offense that you have now. So I love that. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing about Jalen, uh, it reminds me a little of Baltimore, where Baltimore took this quarterback that a lot of people doubted mm -hmm. and they said, you know, we're going to – we think it's going to catch – it's going to be hard to prepare for. Yeah. I think Lamar's hard to prepare for. You don't have a player in your roster that can duplicate practice. I think Jalen's okay. hard to prep for. Now, here's the question. A lot of people felt with Lamar the second time you played him helped. Okay, yeah. And, I, and I've heard this for people in the NFL. Jimmy Johnson says what they do is new. <laughs> it catches you off guard. Yeah. You play him a second time. So do you believe in the second half of the NFL season, people will kind of catch up to what Philly's doing? Um, I, that's a great question, right? I just think that it's, it's hard to do, right? Because, like, the, when people start catching on to what you do best, I don't care who the team is, who the coach is, defense or offense, whatever you do best, when you got to have it as a defense, they're going to do that. Offense, you're going to do that. So I think it's a matter of just, you know, evolving. Like, I think we'll see different things. I, I, I think we'll start seeing more taking uh, shots deep with Jalen Hurts. Um, so I think it's just adjusting as they adjust. Okay, so I remember um, Greg Cosell said, Colin, you need to watch this kid in Wyoming. So I watched them okay. against Oregon okay. and Iowa. He was awful. He had a huge <laughs> arm. And he was playing with Iowa. Yeah, uh, he was yeah. playing with Wyoming guys. Wyoming guys. I get so that. So it was like you could see how big and strong he was. He was skinny, big, strong kid. But you could see it. Like he had a hose, man. He was just flying things. Right. But I'm like, whew, he is loose. And then it takes Dable about a year yeah. to kind of iron out his wildness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then he does. Now, now Dable leaves. And I feel like in second halves, he's gotten wild again. Yeah. Is it possible he just misses – his coach, the guy that really changed him. Well, you're on to something because when I got there, I remember seeing this kid, his first practice. I'm like, whoa. First of all, you see him, he's a big dude, right? He jumps off the screen. But the thing was more just his accuracy. Some, sometimes he's very accurate. And then, the, and then the accuracy when it's 25 yards downfield, you're like, wow. But then there's some plays you talk about where I'm like, whoa, where the hell is this guy throwing the ball at? Right. You're right? So his talent was always there. And then Dayball did a great job. Him and Ken Dorsey. Ken Dorsey was a quarterback coach at the time. Yeah. Well, now he's the coordinator. But the, the way that they emphasize, you know, the accuracy, practice over and over again. Repetition. Repetition, for sure. Um, you know, so he, he, he looked it good and he got better and better. I don't know if he will say he missed a ball. I think he's at a level where he, he's a pro. Like, just sometimes I think um, as players, especially when we're at that type of level and I've been there, it's like I can do no wrong. Right? You have to go back to the basics. Like, hey, right. you know what? Maybe I might not try to force things. That's like what normal. I feel like. Yeah. He feels like he has to be Superman. I can see that. You know, I, I do think that last game, I, I didn't think he played that bad, right? Um, we talked about, you know, before the show, because, like, even, like, okay, so the first pick, 
it was fourth and two. Yeah. I mean, what, what's he going to do? Like, throw the ball away. So, I get that, trying to make a play. And then trying to win the game. You're trying to win the game. Um, I would love to see probably a, a, a different play. Or, or maybe get get it back and maybe throw it away, yeah. you know. But he's got to take his time a little bit. I think sometimes he gets he gets wild a little bit. We were talking during the break. Uh, J Mac was talking with Shady and I, and we, we were we were talking about. I know that Kirk Cousins isn't cool, but yeah. I said <laughs> I like my quarterbacks to be a little nerdy. I don't want him to be the world's coolest guy. Right. And and I was surprised. I said, "What do you make of Kirk Cousins?" And you said you loved him. Yeah. The, the uncool things okay. I, 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 and you can tell, like. When you watch the videos after the game, right, like the press conferences and what the players say about the, about the player, about Kirk, or even on the airplane, when they got the, the videos, got all the chains on, he's iced right. out, he's showing, you know, like that shows that they, they, they like him a lot. They care for him and, and they have a, a certain bond. And I, I think it's, it, it makes it cool because he's not like super down cool. That's why I got the jewelry on him. But I love that about him. Like I love a guy that, that my quarterback, that's, he's on time to, to meetings. He's, he's 10 minutes earlier than everybody else. You know, he's, 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 when we're leaving out, he's still watching tape. So I love that about him. I, mean, I think that's cool to me in its own way. One of the things, we, we've talked about this, Sala's first year with the Jets was a mess. Yeah. But he was inheriting an organization that's not historically right. well run. Yeah, for sure. So Josh McDaniels goes to the Raiders. Been pretty bumpy for 20 years. And a lot of times, like, I watch the Raiders and I see hope. I'm like, Waller's been hurt. Renfro's been hurt. It's always been a little wonky ownership group. I look at Denver and I see hopeless. Right. I look at the Raiders and I'm like, Waller's never here. Renfro's never hurt. They've had moments. And then Derek, Derek Carr breaks down at the podium. How do you think that plays to the room? Derek breaking down at the podium. Yeah, see, see I will feel that, right? Because I, I think the hard work you know, the, the time you're put in, day in, day out, all the hours away from your family. And then you, you practice so hard, you do all these things, and then your results are a loss. Results are a loss. So I feel him, but like he talked about, everybody doesn't go through that. Everybody's not putting that, them hard hours in. Everybody's not that dedicated. So, I mean, some people might not even understand his frustration or, or what, what, you know, how emotional he got and the reason why. Did you get emotional like that at times? Yeah, yeah, especially, I mean, I remember my, my last year with Buffalo, uh, I was like, what, like the, I think even he yeah, going into that year, it's like, what, what are we doing here? Are we, are we trying to win or, or, or are we tanking? Like, as I get old, as I'm getting older, I, I want to win a Super Bowl. That's I want right. to win a championship. So, I mean, sometimes like, and I, I think Derek his his personality is probably not to to go grab a guy and check him. That's right. Or I might, hey, listen, brother, I gotta let's go talk. You know. <laughs> so, so I think that's the difference. But, but yeah, I've been like that plenty of times. Yeah. So yesterday, Green Bay, finally, we've been saying this for a month, just run the ball 30 times. Right. So go back to your career. And I, you ever been in one of those games? I think, actually, you may have been on Philly. Were you on the Philly team that went to Lambeau and ran it down their throat? Yes. Yep. I remember yep. that. You yep. guys punched them in the forehead. Yeah. When you're, <laughs> when you're in one of those games, and you are just physically imposing your will. I thought yeah. Green Bay's like, no, no, we're just going to keep running it. I think it's a little demoralizing. It is. Go, go back to, go back to your time in the NFL when you know you can get five yards. Yeah, it's just, and then like you keep running it and running over and over and over and over again. So you stop it. I mean, and then the the, the best part is like you break the will. When like the defense, listen, they're gonna run the ball the whole game. That, that's all we're going to do, and you know it. And we're in the huddle. You're in the huddle. You know the next place coming out this huddle is a run, and you can't stop it. That's the best thing in football. And you ice the game out like that. Like, we watched that game to the Packers. I mean, like, I've never seen an offense, not even in the Packers' history, that conservative. I think Aaron had, like, 11 passes in three quarters. Yeah. They just ran the ball the whole time. So That's this, how they have to win. That's yeah. okay, by the way. That's how they have to win. Until you play, play a team like my birds where we're not just letting you run the ball up and down the field. You have to throw the ball. Right. Well, they're not going to beat Philadelphia. That's a whole. <laughs> Do you miss playing for the Eagles? Um, you know what? I, I didn't really, like, miss playing once I retired. But um, I just went to, to the game. They played Dallas, actually. And that was the first time since I've been retired. Like, wow, I really want to get out there and play. Just the environment. I, I think the team, the team's lights out, you know, the, the well put together. So, yeah. The I, city just loves. Oh. God. When and you then, were starring for them, you made six Pro Bowls. What is it like being a star for the Philadelphia Eagles? You know, it's a football town. Like, and the, the cool thing is, uh, like, you've seen that the um, Phillies right. were, in, were in the championship, right? right, right so, 
Like, imagine playing then and the Eagles are playing now. And they're both playing really, really well. The city's on fire. You know, I remember even when they won a championship and I wasn't there, the Eagles on Broad Street, it was crazy. I remember looking on social media and I was just imagining, wow, if I, if I was on this team, what would it be like? So this is a great time. And I think, like, when, when both of the teams are playing well and you add in the Sixers playing well, the whole city's on fire. It's a great time. So I'm not a big fire the coach guy, but off a bye, off a bye. Yeah. Denver couldn't get to the red zone. Rush for yeah, that was six. ridiculous. So, have you ever been in a locker room where everybody in the room knew our coach ain't in? His time up. The time is up. His time is up. I watched on even before the bye week, like different games where the clock management, like every coach I've been around, especially the good ones, they have somebody that that manages the clocks. Okay, even like so, let's say I don't know, two minutes left in a in a quarter, going to the two minute two minute drill, going to the half. You have a, a clock guy to manage that. It's letting the coach know, hey, Andy, you know, if we get the, our kicker is the best at, you know, 40, 40 yards, 50 yards. And this is managing everything, the clock and, and the field position, et cetera. And when I watch his games, they don't have that. He's always not using a timeout. Or, 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 or one time he had the kicker and, and, and position to kick a field goal. They didn't do it. Then he elects to go for it. It's like he's all over the place. It's time. And then the bye week. You have all this time to prepare. Well, and Tennessee like, had, had five defensive stars. <laughs> Half of the Tennessee Titans oh defense God. didn't play. I think they also had a defensive player injured during the game. So 50% of their defense is not playing. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous. It's time. And good, the guys know it in the locker room. They Yeah, I, I mean, I've been there. We had Chip Kelly. Um, and you knew. Yeah, after, after going into my second year there, it was time. I mean, you got like a guy like Jason Peters is probably the best player on the team. And – um. We had we we're going fast tempo, and there was times where guys, hey coach, we need a break. Sure, you know, we, older every, players, every, older players. You, everybody has like a, a um a committee, an older group, like the captain committee. Coach, we need a break. Guys are beat up, retired, etc. And he wouldn't listen. And we would sit in that locker room, look at each other, like, listen, his time is, his days is numbered. So I understand. I'm, I'm sure Denver's going through that. Yeah, all of our days are numbered. I wouldn't want Shady looking around at Cowherd. His, his days are not I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. But I get it. Let's start working too hard now. Hold up. We need a break. No, I get it, though. I get it. Like you, there's an old saying. Billy Martin was a baseball manager years ago. He said 10, 10 of the players love you, the 25. 10 love you, 10 hate you. Right. Keep the five that are undecided yeah. away from the guys that hate you. That's right. That's true. <laughs> that keep you around longer. <laughs> Great seeing you. Yeah, always good to see you guys, man. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.